After watching over 150 new movies this past year, from some of my favorite directors to being introduced to some new up and coming directors to covering a film festival and some weeks feeling like I was at the theater more than I was at home, the time has come for me to share with you all my top 10 movies of 2023. What is going on movie fans and welcome back to my channel. The time has come. This is a stressful but yet fun time. I will be sharing with you all my top 10 personal favorite movies of 2023. Just a friendly reminder. I'm pretty sure you all know this, but just in case you don't, it's my personal list, right? There's no right or wrong answers. Some of these films are purely just something I love to rewatch. I have a personal connection to the story. I just flat out love these movies. So again, if I don't have a movie that you love, doesn't mean I didn't see it or didn't like it. It's just just didn't make my personal list but that being said in those comments go ahead and share your personal 5 10 15 20 favorite movies that you all saw this past year and let's have some fun in the comments below so this was a tough year man i absolutely love the movies that we got this past year i know some of the big blockbusters didn't really stick the landing for the most part but there was some really great small independent first time directors some of my favorite directors that really brought some of my favorite films of all time that came out this past year that we'll get into but before we get into my list let me share with you all 10 honorable mentions i won't run through each one given the little detail why they didn't make the list or why it's on the list i really had a good time with films this year so with that being said here are 10 of my honorable mentions in no particular order we have evil dead rise talk to me air Gran Turismo, Strange Darling, which will be coming out in 2024, what a fantastic thriller, Rustin, Taste of Things, Anatomy of a Fall, The Boy and the Heron, Society of the Snow, and They Clone Tyrone, all fun films, excellent films, I love them so much, but they weren't able to make my top 10, so before we get into my list, go ahead and share your honorable mentions in the comments now, so with that being said, the time has come, let's start off by talking about number 10, which is coming from first time director A.V. Rockwell by the name of 1001. I connected to the story so much, seeing this single black mother raising her black son and trying to do the best for him, providing him with the best, teaching him to be a good person. Tiana Taylor was exceptional, and all of the three different actors who played Terry were incredible. By the time we got to the end of this story, I was a complete wreck. Like, this is one of those films that spoke to me personally. I was raised by a single mom, and just seeing that relationship and seeing Tiana just pouring her soul into the character, it's just a subtle, impactful, important film that I highly recommend you all go check out if you haven't already, but I'm so happy that I was able to see this film, and that's why 1001 made my list. Moving on to number nine, coming from another first-time director, Cork Jefferson, who delivered an amazing film by the name of American Fiction. To me, this was a satisfying and clever satirical comedy that exposes the elements of media that are so obsessed with portraying black trauma and exploiting black stereotypes as entertainment. Absolutely love this entire cast. Jeffrey Wright delivers a nuanced performance, but Sterling K. Brown absolutely steals this film. He was such a great character. This film was so well balanced with comedy and family drama. And again, the performances were so rich and so detailed. It's just a really good, well-written film, a clever film, has a lot to say about social commentary. Again, with black stereotypes and entertainment, American fiction, I believe, is still in theaters on a limited run, but if you all have the opportunity to see it in theaters definitely do yourself a favor and check it out it is a fantastic film moving on to my number eight that is alexander payne's the holdovers just don't make movies like the holdovers anymore this movie works on so many levels for me the chemistry between paul giamani and newcomer dominic sessa in the sensational performance by divine joy rudolph was absolutely brilliant every time she was on screen this movie manages to feel like nostalgia because of the retro style in which is shot but also it has this extremely unique, fresh, simplistic tone to it. The use of humor is great. This movie is truly hilarious. It's subtle with this dialogue between the characters, but at the heart of this film, it really represents not judging a book by its cover, being able to connect with another, and just seeing that trio of characters come together, man. They all came from different walks of life. They all had their own kind of things they were dealing with, but it is a holiday classic in my eyes, and The Holdover is just a, a comfort movie for me now. Like, I literally watch it on Christmas like that's how much I enjoyed the holdovers and that's why I was making my list. 
Coming in at number seven is May, December, directed by the incredible Todd Haynes. This film is all about obsession and control and is complemented perfectly with some great direction. The movie masterfully handles the various tones of feeling uncomfortable one moment, then playing into the kind of melodramatic moments so perfectly. Julianne Moore, Natalie Portman are absolutely sensational in this movie, but Charles Milton is outstanding in his very difficult and complex role. This is an excellently crafted powerhouse of a film it's not for everyone i know there's been some criticisms that people have for the film lately but i remember seeing this in the theater and just being like in complete awe of like what is this movie and being uncomfortable and then just seeing these performances and how all these characters are just coming down on my man joe and just seeing that performance by charles milton my goodness i really hope he gets that recognition that i believe he deserves when it comes to oscar season because he's that damn good in this movie but may december really worked for me and that's why it's on this list moving in to my number six and this surprised the hell out of me because we're talking about Godzilla minus one. I never expected to be so emotionally attached to an enormous fire breathing sea lizard Godzilla that levels cities with ease but this hard hitting character driven story completely captured my attention from the very beginning all the way to the end. It has all the spectacle that you come to expect from a Godzilla film who was absolutely terrifying in this movie. I love the cinematic approach to whenever he appeared on screen, complemented perfectly with his very iconic score. I cannot stress enough how excellent the character development was and how much I cared for these characters and their story. It was all I was thinking about after watching it. I was so happy to experience this in theaters. It is so great to see Godzilla kind of going back to return to form, right? Like, I have nothing against the MonsterVerse. Like, I have fun with those films. Films, but I don't really care for the characters or the story going on. I just want to see kaiju monsters fight. But in this film, you want these characters to overcome this big obstacle in Godzilla and come together. And it's just such a great movie. And again, I literally saw this like at the beginning or kind of in the middle of December. It wasn't really on my radar until I heard all the hype and the buzz. And I'm like, is it really that good? Yes, it is. <laughs> like Godzilla is a fantastic film. And that's why I came in at number six on my list. But before we get into my top five, I want to take this time to thank you all for making it to this point in the video. If you're having a good time so far, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up, hit the share button, leave your list in the comments below. And of course, consider subscribing to the channel. Time to get into that top five territory. Starting off with number five, and that is one of my favorite directors of all time, Martin Scorsese's Killer of a Flower Moon. This is a very dark and devastating retrospective story about greed and corruption. The performance is given by the legend Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, and newcomer Lily Gladstone is nothing short of masterful, as Lily was subtly carrying so much of the emotional weight, and her performance is truly the heart of this film. To me, I consider this to be one of Martin Scorsese's most personal and important films to date that is so bleak and violent but also poignant and intimate as to me he continues to show why he's one of if not one of the best storytellers in cinematic history i'll remember sitting in that theater and number one not feeling like i was watching a three and a half hour movie but feeling the emotional weight from what was going on in that story again martin scorsese is a legend in my eyes some beautiful performances this was my first time seeing lily perform and i definitely feel confident that she will be nominated when it comes to that time of the year i don't know if she's going to win but man that performance by her and everyone was just beautiful so Killers of a Flower Moon is again not for everyone because I, I've seen the controversy and the criticisms that people have and I share some of that I mentioned it in my review as far as the perspective of the film but I still thought it was a masterfully done movie. Moving into my number four and that is coming from Your Ghost Lantimos by the name of Poor Things. I can confidently say I've never seen anything like this film it is remarkable filmmaking and Emma Stone in my my opinion delivers one of the most captivating performances I've ever seen. This movie is beyond strange, but at the core of it, it is a compelling story about a person learning what it means to live in this narrative that was created in this chaotic world that is presented in this film. Got to give some love to the supporting cast who I thought were fantastic. It's definitely not for everyone, but I just found this film to be absolutely brilliant. Like I mentioned, Emma Stone to me is the front runner to win Best Supporting Actress. Mark Ruffalo, I, for the longest time, I was like Robert Downey Jr is going to win off an Oppenheimer as far as supporting male actor but I recently rewatched this movie last night before recording this video and Mark Ruffalo is so great in this film like it's one of my favorite performances by him as well as Willem Dafoe like everything comes together again I am very aware that it is not for everyone but I am so enamored by this story and again 
Bella Baxter played beautifully by Emma Stone. Like, I love poor things. Moving into that number three top territory here, coming in at that third spot is the one and only Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. For the longest time, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was my personal favorite Spider-Man film, but after seeing Across the Spider-Verse, it took that number one spot because it went to another level. The animation and the art style was spectacular, and the character dynamics and relationships were complex and layered. It is a non-stop multiversal adventure that puts his story first above everything. And even with all the unexpected cameos and fun easter eggs and the twists and the turns, it never forgot to tell Miles Morales' story. I absolutely love the score. To me, this is a perfect comic book film and one of the best films of the year. It is my favorite personal now Spider-Man movie. I love this movie so much. I know people say it's only part of a story, but it's still a great story nonetheless. Like, do we fault, you know, Empire Strike Back or do we fault the Lord of the Ring going into the Returning King? Like, no, it's still its own complete story with more to tell based off the ramifications of that story. So I love that film. I just watched it not too long ago. <laughs> the animation's beautiful. The comedy's there. The character dynamics are there. Like, I love Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse and that's why it's number three on my list. But now it came down to two. We got two films left. And coming in in my second place is first time director Celine Song's Past Lives. This was an emotional experience like I've never had this past year while watching the movie. Nearly every moment in this film felt real and layered and so many earnest emotions. It captures that haunting and heartbreaking reality of what if so perfectly. Celine Song did such a beautiful job of crafting this film and the cinematography was excellent. This movie is deeply moving all while being subtle and quiet at the same time. This to me is a masterpiece of a movie and I forgot to mention there was only three films that I gave a perfect score to. One being Spider-Man and this being the next one and my number one also got a five out of five in my humble opinion but this was a perfect film. I remember watching this and just being like so enamored by the story and the characters and the performances and the cinematography just being like locked into the film and seeing myself in these characters and it's being so relatable because I think we can all relate to that what if this happened and I could have been with it you know we've all had that moment and how it plays against the stereotypes of like romantic stories of not every there's not happy endings every time right so I just love how beautiful it is and when you talk about emotional wrecks when I got into well first off I was a wreck in the movie watching it but when I got in my car it just like hit me again I rewatched it recently and those emotional beats still hit. Like this is a personal favorite film of mine of all time. And this is an all time great to me. What a movie, Past Lives is fantastic. And that's why it's number two. But coming in at number one, one of my favorite directors of all time delivered what I think is his best film to date, and that is Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer is filmmaking at its absolute finest. The story felt concise and focused on delivering a compelling and frightening experience in Oppenheimer's complex story. This pulsating thriller takes a deep dive into the depths of power and what power can do to one person. There are moments that left me absolutely emotionally shocked because of the sheer scope and scale of fully exploring the actions of these people in creating this world killer. Killian Murphy's performance throughout this film was nothing short of brilliant. Robert Downey Jr. Jr., Emily Blunt, Florence Pugh, just name a few. Literally every actor in this film brought their A game in this movie. Ledwood's score is the best score of the year, hands down. The cinematography was flawless. Again, being a fan of Christopher Nolan, I think this is his best directing to date as well as his best script. This to me was a cinematic achievement. I don't know why I watch this film so often. Like, I own the movie, so I'm able to watch it. And it's just, like, moments where, like, you know what? I'm going to watch this scene. I want to watch the Trinity Test scene. I want to watch the scene where he's in that auditorium giving the speech and just that moment where he's seeing the de devastation and just, uh, I love the movie so much. Again, that score do you, do you guys hear it? Do, do you hear the music? <laughs> I love the score. It it's, it's almost feels like you're watching like an action movie, the way it just moves through things and everything feels so big because it is such an important story. This is one of the most important men in human history, right? And oh, I just can go on and on and on about this film, but I'm going to end it here. Oppenheimer to me, like I said, is Christopher Nolan's best film to date, even though my personal favorite is still Interstellar, but it is just a masterful film with 
world-class performances and just that ending is one of the best endings I've ever seen of a film. So Oppenheimer is number one on my list. As you all can see, here is the full list you all can see on the screen now. Again, I think this was a fantastic year for movies. Again, I know some of the blockbusters really didn't stick the landing financially, critically, but there are a lot of films that I recommend you all see. If you guys haven't seen some of these films, definitely give it a watch, but I think it's a great year. I thought it was a fantastic year, if I'm being honest with you all. If I'm thinking about it, this might be better than last year, but I'll, you know, it's another conversation for another day. What a great year for film. Some great new filmmakers that deliver some great films. Some great filmmakers that's been around for a while that I love their movies and still making movies like Martin Scorsese. So, what a year for movies. But hey, that is my top 10 movies of 2023 as well as my honorable mentions. I love this time of the year. If you guys haven't already, check out my top 10 shows of 2023. My most anticipated will be coming pretty soon as far as movies and shows. I have some short form content with my favorite horror movies, favorite comic book movies, favorite Netflix movies. So I'm going to leave a playlist for all those videos that you all can enjoy. And uh, I really have fun making these videos with you all. So with all that being said, we made it to end this video. Thank you so much. If you haven't already, give it a thumbs up, share, and consider subscribing by clicking clicking this button, checking out all those videos I just talked about, check out my most recent video, and I'll catch you all on the next breakdown.